Hey guys, thanks for watching the Chen Dynasty. It's Mike Chen. The burden of leadership is something that should always be taken on with unparalleled responsibility, especially if you're gonna run a country or an empire. Throughout history, we have read about leaders, kings, queens, generals, and emperors who have brought their civilizations to great heights that to this day, their names have always been synonymous with greatness. Names such as Marcus Aurelius, Elizabeth I, and Tutankhamun are but a few that have left an incredible mark in human history. However, However, where there is greatness and prestige, there is always going to be depravity and infamy. After all, we can only imagine what a taste of power can do even to the most virtuous of human beings. I mean, sometimes their intentions are noble, but their methods are questionable, but most of the time their hearts and intentions are both in dastardly agreement as the corrupting quality of power consumes an individual. So in this video, we're going to travel back in Chinese history and explore the not so beloved and also notorious leaders who have ruled the civilization as we count down to 10 of the worst emperors in Chinese history. At number 10, we have Qin Shi Huang. To say that the first emperor of China ruled his empire with an iron fist is an understatement. From 221 BCE to 210 BCE, Qin Shi Huang built China using the blood of his people. He drove his people, most of whom were farmers, to poverty by slapping extremely high taxes that basically left them with nothing to keep for themselves to survive. In his first year in power, for some strange reason, he ordered the relocation of 120,000 families, displacing them from their livelihood and communities. Books and the scholarly writings that he did not approve of were burned and their authors were often beheaded. While he was credited by historians for building the Great Wall of China, his infrastructures were heavily tainted with the blood of starved and overworked citizens who mostly lost their lives working non-stop. And like most tyrants, Qin Shi Huang of course wanted to live forever. So as death loomed closer, he ordered his scientists to find a way to keep him immortal. And when they failed, the emperor had all of them buried alive. His infamous three mile wide mausoleum was built by the hands of about 700,000 people. Most of them, to no surprise, died in the process of constructing it. By the end of his reign and his death in 210 BCE, it was estimated that Emperor Qin Shi Huang had murdered over 1 million people. Number 9, Emperor Du Zong. Ruling as emperor of the Song Dynasty from 960 to 1274, Du Zong turned his imperial courts into one massive frat house. It was like animal house, except for, you know, in ancient. In China. The emperor was known for his excessive drinking and his affairs with multiple women. And okay, I get that. If you're the emperor, you're gonna drink a lot, you're gonna have a lot of concubines. I, I, that's all understood. But Duzong lived in a time when the Mongol army led by Kublai Khan was toppling down empires one territory at a time. So he maybe should have paid more attention to that. Anyway, committed to capturing the throne of the Song Empire and taking away the crown from Duzong, Kublai Khan's armies managed to capture Xianyang, paving the way for his invading forces to enter southern Song by way of land and sea. Duzong Duzong died in 1274 as his empire burned and crumbled under the might of the Mongols. He was survived by his three sons who were no older than nine. Five years later, the Song Dynasty finally collapsed during the Battle of Yamen when Liu Xifu, prime minister of the empire, jumped into the sea with Duzong's six-year-old son. Number eight, Sui Yangdi. Being only one of two emperors of the Sui Dynasty, Sui Yangdi was an apple that fell really far from his tree. His father, Sui Wendi, founded the dynasty and under his reign managed to unite the central plains of China after nearly 300 years of divisive conflicts. During his later years, Wendi led a campaign to expand the outer borders of his empire and left his son Sui Yangdi to continue after his passing. Intent on continuing his father's plans, Yangdi immediately went to work and attempted to invade Korea and overthrow the Goguryeo kingdom. Fortunately for the Korean peninsula, Yangdi's campaign was ill-conceived and badly planned from the beginning. His aggressive taxation and conscriptions nearly drove his empire to bankruptcy and started a civil unrest against his regime and in 618, Emperor Suyangdi was killed in a military-led coup to topple him from the throne. Number 7, Emperor Tianzhu. The last emperor of the Liao Dynasty, Tianzhu actively ignored the warnings of his ministers and generals about the looming threat of the Wan Yan clan who eventually and quite successfully dismantled his empire and installed the Jin Dynasty. Occupying himself more with hunting and polo, Tianzhu practically relinquished all his state affairs to his brother-in-law. Due also to his lack of enthusiasm for his position, I don't know why you would ever be, Tenzo's empire allowed malicious officials to ascend to higher government positions. His negligence of state affairs finally reached a fever pitch when corruption became uncontrollably rampant. Civil unrest was a daily event, and armed conflicts between political families became an everyday norm. And in 1128, Emperor Tenzo was killed by Jin troops and had his body trampled by horses. Number 6, Sun Hao. Grandson of Sun Quan, Sun Hao was the last emperor of Eastern Wu during the period of the Three Kingdoms. It was his inca 
capability of handling state affairs in his cruel lifestyle that eventually ended the Three Kingdom period when Eastern Han was raised and destroyed by the Jin clan. During his first year on the throne, Hall earned the favor of his people by reducing taxes and regulating the behaviors of his advisors and inner circle. Unfortunately, as time went on, Hall's true colors began to be revealed. Sadistic and cold-blooded, Hall was a tyrant who spared no one in his wrath. Many of his advisors who fell in his disfavor ended up on the execution block. Hall was also no stranger to employing torture to his enemies or to anyone he pleases as he ordered their eyes gouged out and their skin peeled from their faces. When the Jin clan captured Eastern Wu, Sun Hao was dethroned and became prisoner to Wu Emperor Sima Yan. In 284, Sun Hao, the last emperor to Eastern Wu, succumbed to illness and died in Luoyang. Number 5. Emperor Di Xin Sima Qian, a Han era historian, described Emperor Di Xin, also known as Zhuo Xin, as one of the most wicked rulers in history. He was known to indulge in his vices at the expense of his own country. Apart from the fact that the emperor had a certain taste for public display of very raunchy affection, I'll put it that way, his love of wine was also unparalleled. Imposing a heavy tax on his people in order to build a lake of wine drove the Chinese people to starvation. What's even worse was his wife, Da Ji, was also vilified by the people, blaming her for the emperor's moral downfall. Apparently, she was known for her sadism and cruelty, such as watching her enemies wither in pain as they are tied to white-hot metal pillars. Eventually, Di Xin was overthrown by the armies of Zhou as they easily broke down his walls and conquered his kingdom. Rather than facing his enemies and be held captive, Di Xin, in a final act of madness, burned his palace down and took his own life in 1046 BCE. And to this day, people believe that his wife Da Ji was actually possessed by a fox spirit, and she was the main reason for the downfall of the emperor in the kingdom. Number 4. Emperor Sizong Ascending to the throne of the Ming Dynasty at the age of 15, Emperor Sizong was anything but competent. Many historians claim that his downfall was partly due to some kind of learning disability and illiteracy. While he may have been a really good carpenter, he had little knowledge and interest in state affairs. It was because of his disinterest in politics that he entrusted diplomatic and domestic affairs to his eunuch, Wei Zhongxian, a less than amiable character who had illicit affairs with Emperor Sizong's nanny. Almost immediately, the emperor's power was taken away by Wei, and he did this by appointing close allies to key government positions, practically rendering Sizong powerless in his own empire. The Dongling Party, one of the few political organizations loyal to the emperor, appealed to Sizong and asked to remove Wei and his associates from their positions as the country was being driven into crushing poverty and corruption. Unsurprisingly, of course, the emperor ordered the accused Wei to take care of the matter. And Wei did by purging members of the Dongling Party and sent his rivals and critics to exile, prison, or the gallows. Political and civil unrest began to grow beyond the control of the de facto ruler Wei, and the Ming Dynasty was close to collapse. Fortunately, Emperor Sizong nearly escaped the rebellion with his life in 1627, but in the same year died after drinking an unknown substance. And due to all his children having died young, the Ming Dynasty ended with no heir to reclaim the throne. Number 3. Liu Shan The downfall of Emperor Liu Shan, unlike other people on this list, was not due to his vices or to his excess. It was really his incompetence that finally disintegrated the Shu Han state during the period of the Three Kingdoms. Given the nickname Ado, a term used even today to describe someone just, just completely stupid, Liu Shan was crowned emperor when he was only 17 years old, and despite having the full support of Zhuge Liang, arguably the most intelligent and respected military official and strategist in Chinese history, Liu Shan was unable to strengthen the Shu and eventually appointed his villainous eunuch Huang Hao to handle state affairs. This decision by the emperor ultimately forced the surrender of the state of Shu to the state of Wei. Number 2. Emperor Tianfei Emperor Tianfei, whose name is Liu Ziye, made his demise at the hands of his uncle Liu Yu. But not before he had made his mark in history as one of the most depraved and murderous emperors of China. Ascending the throne at the age of 15, Ziye was never the favorite of Emperor Xiao Wu, and he greatly preferred Liu Ziluan, Ziye's younger brother, to succeed him in leading China. But when Ziye ultimately took power, he forced his brother to commit suicide and ordered the murder of the children of the consort Yin Zulan's mother. Blood relatives were also ordered to be placed under house arrest, and prized officials of the former emperor were purged for fear of a revolt against his reign. Basically, this guy was a raging lunatic, and after a year on the throne, he was assassinated. Finally, number one, King Jie. King Jie was the last emperor of the Xia dynasty, and he was actually really intelligent and a skilled warrior, but he used all his smarts on being just a really evil person, and is known in Chinese history as perhaps the most cruel emperor to have ever lived. When he ascended to the throne, the Xia dynasty was already in a state of unrest and people were suffering, but instead of trying to fix things, all King Jie did was drink and pursue beautiful women. He 
even created a lake of wine so large that boats could sail on it. And people getting drunk and falling in and drowning was a regular occurrence. The guy even created a forest of meat. So he would sail on the lake of wine and just go walk into the forest of meat for food. And like I mentioned before, King Jie loved beautiful women. He loved them so much that he asked neighboring countries to send him all their beauties. And if they didn't, he would declare war on them. His prized beauty was a concubine named Mo Xi, who was given to him from a neighboring country. But Mo Xi was really sent to avenge her people and bring down the Xia Empire. So every day she would make crazy demands that King Jie would always agree to. For example, she said that she loved hearing the sound of silk being torn. So every day, King Jie would have people tear a bunch of silk for her to the point that the torn silk almost formed a mountain. Eventually, 31 years into his reign, King Jie is said to have been overthrown in a revolution and died a lonely death in exile. Wow, those are some crazy powerful dudes. I think in the future, 100 years into the future, 200 years into the future, if there is still YouTube and YouTubers, which I highly doubt, because the world probably would have been taken over by robots by then. But just in case this still exists, I wonder if they would do a similar list like this and maybe talk about the craziest rulers in the world in history. And then Kim Jong-un, Kim 3 Fat will be on this list. And what I do like about ancient China or ancient anywhere is that if people were really disgruntled, right? If, if the people were really unhappy, they could form a revolution. They could form an army because there were really no guns back then. Because mainly how people fought back then was with swords and spears and shields. And people themselves could make those things where they could use pitchforks or whatever makeshift weapons at their disposal. So if they really didn't like an emperor, they could get together and, and force them out. But now with guns and advanced weaponry, you can't really do anything like that. Because in ancient times, North Korea, yeah, there'd be a revolution right there. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you later.